Well, hello and welcome. My name is Rich Briggs and we're going to produce a series of videos showing the process of throwing on the potter's wheel and doing a variety of projects. So I'm going to be using uh, Laguna clay products. Uh, I've got a recycled clay that sold 860 with uh, some other clays mixed in. I'll also be using a stony white and some B-mix. Uh, before we actually get started, I've got two, two thoughts. Uh, one is an idea I picked up at a conference. There is no art without craft. My expanded definition is craft is what your hands know how to do and art is what your heart wants to express. So we're going to learn how to be good craftsmen. We're going to, we're going to finish the pieces. So that brings us to point number two. We hope you're comfortable with failure. Failure means you're still in the game. Failure's part of success. So with some persistence and a lot of practice, you'll be able to pick up these techniques. So we're going to get started. Uh, I'm going to be, put a bat on here. And the kind of bats that I'm using, I like to add a little bit of clay to help hold them in place. And so we're going to start out uh, wedging the clay. We're going to start with a method. Uh, we're just going to have our hands on the sides, pushing down and away. Uh, back in the day, we used to call it the monkey face method or the ram's head. Uh, lately, I've been calling it the Princess Leia. But uh, what if, whatever we call it, we're just going to realign the clay particles and, and just get a nice, even little ball of clay that uh, when we throw it on and plop it on the wheel, that uh, we don't have to fight with it too much. Um, I use the foot pedal. Uh, I operate it by hand. Um, I don't have very good flexibility in my ankles, and so... Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and be using the pedal this way. Uh, I would recommend that if you're going to use the pedal on the floor, that you get it going the speed that you want, and then you just take your foot off. I, I like to, I've got my feet up on a couple of two by six boards. It raises my knees up a little bit higher so that then I can brace and, and use my body for leverage. Uh, I use all of the tools that are in the basic toolkit, but the only thing, we know that the yellow sponges break down and, and rip real easily, and so then I just switch over to kitchen sponges. They're cheap, and, and I actually like the thickness and the size. So we're going to just get going, nice medium speed, got my water bucket little bit of water for lubricant. First thing we're going to do is just our hands on both sides of the clay and we're just going to cone it up. I think it's actually easier if you bring it up a little bit to take it down in order to get it in the middle to get it centered. So we're just going to cone it just a little and then to push down left hand is on the side and right hand is on the top pushing down and so you, you get it close to the center and so now we're get, gonna just lean in with our left hand our left arm is braced against our body and I like to I, I call them little beehives I like the lump of clay to be centered a little bit wider at the base so that we'll be able to get in there So that's the process of centering. So let me show you what happens when students, if the clay is going around, they'll call me over and they'll say, hey, is that centered? And I'll say, well, it's close. The problem is if we start opening at this point, we'd have one really thick side and one thin side. So as soon as we start pulling, that thin side's just gonna rip. So we need to get it 
as close to the center as possible. And the way we're going to achieve that is left hand is going to be braced against our body and then if we just lean with our torso, we can get the unevenness out of the side. The right hand comes and flattens that off so that we can get the clay right in the middle. Okay, once we have it centered, we don't want to throw it off. I like to just keep my left hand braced. With my right hand, I'm going to brace against my left wrist, and I'm going to open up with my index finger. I call it opening up like a volcano. We got lots of contact. We're not poking at it. But if we just slide down the side, and then most of us, we need to just stop the wheel. And if we want to check and see how thick the base is, we're going to just put our needle down there and say we've got about a half an inch for the base. So for most of our shapes, that's what we're going to get started with. So now that I've opened, now I'm just going to bring my finger directly towards me to be able to open that up enough that I can get my hand done in there. So now we're going to switch and we're going to have the left hand on the inside, right hands on the outside, and we want to think of the inside hand like a doorstop. If the inside hand is pushing out, everything's going to turn into a bowl. And we want to make a cylinder. We're going to start out making cylinders. It's a little harder to start out to try and get the clay uh, tall. I started out with about three pounds of clay and we're going to try and get it about the size of our wooden tool. So left hands on the inside, right hand, you can brace your thumb together. And the way that I throw and the way that I teach students is I actually hold on to the sponge. It breaks anyone of the habit of, of just trying to use their palm. So we're going to just keep digging in down right next to the bat and trying to get that thick clay because we know that it's going to be thicker down at the base. Now that we've got it up about this tall, we can't, we can't reach over with our thumb. So we have to start with our thumb with our fingers. And we're getting underneath that right down there at the base. And then we're bringing that up. And then I like to just reach over and finish the pull with our thumb connected. Just kind of rest on the rim. So when we're first learning how to throw, they tend to be a little thick at the bottom, a little thin at the top. So that's what we're learning. We're learning how much clay is between our fingers. So we're going to go and we're going to get that last little bit that's down at the bottom. So we get right underneath that, thin out that wall. And then when we get up to this point, we kind of slide off because we don't want to thin it out too much. I'm going to, I can slow the wheel down a little bit. I'm going to go and clean up that wobble just a little bit. Okay, so with three pounds of clay to get it up as tall as the stick, sometimes I'm going to dig the water out a little bit. Sometimes even though you have it centered, a little bit of unevenness might come out at the top. So we're going to take our needle tool, I say to hold it like a pencil, hold it, and if you can get your left hand involved, if you can brace and have your fingers on the inside, and if, if the rim is a little uneven, we're going to just come in and just very carefully, we're just cutting through a little at a time and we can go and we can trim off the, the rim.
Last thing, we're gonna take the cut edge of the wooden tool and we're just gonna follow down. Maybe just a little bit of support that we had down there, we're gonna cut that off so that we have more of a straight up and down cylinder. So what I like to do with my students is we actually take these and then we're gonna cut them open and we're gonna check our craftsmanship. So this is how we're really telling how much clay we have between our fingers. Uh, we like to leave a nice even base and then start coming up and like we said a little bit of extra down there for support but we just don't want to let it get too thin up around the shoulder. So we're going to cut open a few and make sure that we can pull decent cylinders and then we'll start shaping those cylinders into various projects. So stick with us and join us for the next one. We'll, uh, we'll see you in the next class.